Hi guys, my name is Carolyn and I'm here to talk to you about PALS, Peer Assisted Learning Strategies in Math, so I hope you like it. Peer Assisted Learning Strategies in Math. We're going to discuss PALS math, we're going to discuss the methods implemented in the classroom, and we're going to show some examples, and then we'll look at the research to see if it really does work. PALS was developed at Vanderbilt Univers University by Doug Fuchs and Lynn Fuchs, and it combines peer learning with instructional le learning to enhance the student's learning experience. It consists of two procedures, coaching and practicing, and the teacher will group the students in pairs based on their achievement levels. One student will be part of the higher achieving group in the classroom, and the other will be part of the lower achieving group. The students will alternate partners every few weeks. PALS is meant to complement the lesson, not to take the lesson's place, so the teacher will include it in the lesson. It takes about 25 to 35 minutes based on the activity, and it will be implemented two to four times a week. It is a student-based activity, and the teacher does not take part in the coaching, but the teacher is walking around the classroom assessing the conversations between the students, and the teacher is responsible to match the students based on their skill level. As previously mentioned, there is two procedures. There is the coaching procedure, where out of the two students that have been paired, the teacher has paired together, one will be assigned coach, usually the higher achiever, and the other will be assigned player. The teacher will distribute worksheets to the students based on the lesson, and the coach will guide the player through the first half of the questions. At that point, the coach and the player will switch positions. The coach will become the player, and the player will become the coach for the remaining set of questions. The students will then move on to practice where they will work on a separate worksheet individually and then they'll mark each other's work giving one point for each correct answer. Here we're going to look at some of the sample worksheets from PALS. As this is a student-based activity, these worksheets will be distributed after a lesson and the teacher is now depending on the students to coach each other. The teacher's role is to walk around assessing the conversations. The first worksheet is a kindergarten PALS activity, and the writing on the side is just there to guide the coach. The coach will ask how many, and the player will have to say the number, then demonstrate it with their fingers. At the smiley face, they will tally up the scores, and at the flag, they will switch places. The students are provided guidance to the questions asked and providing feedback, but they are ultimately responsible to coach based on their own knowledge. This is a grade one worksheet, and the coach will first ask the player to identify the operation, if it's subtraction or addition. They will then ask where they want to start and to write it down. The coach will then ask the player what's next, what's the next step, and then they want the player to write that down as well. And in the end, they'll break it down and then read it out loud. These are coaching and practicing sheets used from grades two to six, and this coaching sheet is addition. And the coaching worksheet will be completed by the students together. One will be the coach for the first half and then the player for the second half. The practice sheet is what the students will do individually to demonstrate their skills separately from each other. PALS is a great way to make use of mixed ability groups. So the teacher can group the higher achieving group with the lower achieving group. And the students can also benefit if they don't have a lot of prior knowledge based on the topic because the teacher can allow this to do scaffolding and that would allow the teacher to address early prerequisite skills required. Students with different learning preferences such as auditory, visual, or kinesthetics will benefit from PALS because throughout the whole process they'll be able to listen to the problems being solved, see the problems being solved, and have a turn at solving the problems themselves. English language learners can benefit from PALS because they can get one-on-one -on -one guidance at a slower pace to understand the material and concepts clearly, and they can get to know the correct words for them in English as well. Students who have math deficiencies, such as in computation, can experience anxiety when they're given a worksheet to complete, so having a peer there to guide that student makes a significant difference in the comfort level.
These are results from a study published by the University of Chicago, and it includes 40 teachers from grades 2 to 4 with students with learning disabilities in their classrooms, and they implemented three different treatments, PMI, which is pure meditated instruction, PMI with conceptual learning, and a contract method in their classroom, and a preliminary study was conducted to ensure race, gender, and grade did not affect the results. But as you can see, both the studies with PMI did have the largest growth post-treatment. And the interesting was the growth for the students with learning disabilities was in line with the low achieving, average achieving, and high achieving students. So does PALS really work? Based on a study Another study of 20 teachers, all with students with learning disabilities in their classroom, all the teachers reported an increase in their students' marks, and they also said their expectations in their students increased as they now knew their students' potentials. The students enjoyed implementing PALS as part of their lesson because it is easier to plan than a full lesson, and they were also able to interact with the whole class and assess each student individually. The students enjoyed coaching more, but they still viewed both coaching and practicing as important. Many students do see math as an intimidating subject and tend to shy away from it. But after implementing PALS, the students became more comfortable in math class. They were motivated to grasp the concept and the overall satisfaction in the class increased as they were now eager to take the assessment and find out their scores immediately, as opposed to waiting a few days as they would have to on other assessments from their teacher. A few drawbacks from PALS was the students not liking their partners, sometimes due to the fact that they were often paired with a classmate they don't usually interact with. But the teachers did, however, see this as an opportunity for the students to get to know other classmates that they don't usually interact with. Four out of 20 teachers reported student dissatisfaction with the time allocated to the activity. And another drawback was the peer feedback provided from the students to each other. Some students were just found giving the answers away when they were supposed to be coaching and guiding the player through the question. But the overall method was successful and the students and the teachers both enjoyed it and benefited from it. If you are interested in learning more about PALS, feel free to go to the website. They have videos and different examples up based on the worksheets. And you can also look at these two journals that both did studies on PALS in the classroom. Hi, thank you for watching. I hope you liked the video. Please feel free to leave me any feedback that you have. And thanks again. Bye-bye.